In this lecture, we will be constructing the aggregate demand curve and be examining why the aggregate demand curve has a negative slope. So firstly, we must note that the aggregate demand curve is a component of consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure plus government expenditure, which can be broken down into G1 and G2, so government current expenditure and government non-current or capital expenditure, plus net exports, which is also exports minus imports. Okay, so let's say the aggregate demand curve is mapped against inflation which is also price, the general price level of the economy, and the income, which is denoted Y, or income, or GDP, or real GDP, for this example, real GDP. Okay, so let's assume that the, that the economy starts off at pi 1. So the inflation rate is, say, 4% CPI at pi 1. And this corresponds to an income level or a GDP level at Y1. Now say for whatever, for whatever reason this inflation rate were to increase to 5% to pi 2 at 5%. We can see that the uh, income or overall GDP of the economy is to decrease to Y2. So let's examine the reasons behind this decrease and why when inflation increases from pi 1 to pi 2, we will examine a corresponding decrease in GDP. So there are four reasons to this phenomenon. And firstly is the wealth effect. So number one, we have a wealth effect, which affects, relates, which effectively relates to our purchasing power. When inflation increases, we can see that if our income stays the same, we will experience a decrease in our real income. And this means that with the, our same income, we can buy a smaller bundle of goods and services. And so if this stays true, our consumption expenditure will decrease. And what this means is that our money worth has decreased following an increase in inflation. Similarly, if we relate back to the wealth effect, because inflation has increased, therefore our money, our worth of money, which in fact relates back to our wealth, has decreased. So to the extent that money forms part of our wealth, for individuals and for the economy as a whole, which relates back to the concept of aggregate demand, our wealth has decreased. And now assuming that wealth is positively related to consumption expenditure, that is, if we feel that we are, we are wealthy, then therefore we will spend, but now that inflation has incurred, our wealth has decreased, our spending will decrease. And now this flows on to the second concept, is that when there is a change in wealth, or when there is an increase in inflation, there is also a change in income. And this relates to basically that the, the less well-off or the less wealthy you are, the more inflation will affect you. So take, for example, someone who earns a million dollars. If you earn a million dollars, then a 1% increase in inflation would not affect your overall purchasing power that much because overall of that million dollars say for example you already save five hundred thousand dollars and that remaining five hundred thousand dollars you can already use to purchase the goods and services that you need to to live a relatively comfortable life but say if your income is only fifty thousand dollars a year and inflation were to increase from 4% to 5%, that means a 1% increase, a 1% decrease in your real income. 
And assuming that you only save 1% of your income uh, at the moment, then we will not, we, the people on lower incomes will no longer have enough money to satisfy their saving, their, uh, all their needs and requirements to survive. And so what this means is that we know that when, when inflation occurs, those on lower incomes tend to have a higher propensity to consume. And because they have a high propensity to consume, when inflation increases, uh, the real redistribution of real incomes from lower to higher is more likely to reduce consumption expenditure overall in the economy. And by that I mean when inflation increases, the incomes of low, the low income consumers will therefore consume less and therefore consumption would go down. And this all forms part of the aggregate demand equation. Thirdly, is that there is a movement from productive to speculative investments. Now remember coming back to the idea that businesses aim to maximize profits. Now when they aim to maximize profits, they want to cut costs. And to cut costs, they need to make their business more efficient in the long run. And so what they do is they have to invest or invest in capital expenditure. So that, that includes machines, capital, etc. So efficiency uh, promoting expenditure. But the yield or the return on this inve investment is very low in the short run. And because in the short run we have an inflation occurring, then consumption is meant is ought to have decreased, and that means businesses will be less um, likely to receive the demand necessary to suf to be sufficient enough to make a make the profit margin that they had planned to make at the start of the year that they had budgeted for. And so, what this means is they would devote more resources out of uh, out of investment expenditure or productive capital expenditure to speculative speculative investments in the form of shares, derivatives, or securities. And what this means is these types of investments don't actually add to output, and they don't affect the overall output in the economy. And so they are not included in the aggregate demand equation. And so the resulting effect is that we will see a decrease in investment expenditure. By the same token, consumers, because now they have very low sentiment, the fourth effect of this, for lower sentiment, they are, they are more likely to save for a rainy day. Because there is a low aggregate demand, a decrease in consumption, and decreasing investment expenditure, there is more likely to be layoffs in the workforce. And so what that means is that consumers or households must insulate themselves from uh, losing, from the possibility of losing their jobs in the future and therefore not have a sustainable or frequent income coming into the family. And so that means that they are saving more of their income. And when they save more of their income, consumption expenditure also goes down. The final aspect to this equation relates to the idea that our imports or our exports become less competitive. So let's rub out this wealth effect first and the purchasing and our change in income distribution. So let's look at the final concept behind why inflation would lead to lower output. So five, our ex exports, exports, which starts off with an X, our exports become less competitive.
But what this means is because inflation has gone up, producers, because they are now investing in more speculative investments, they need to make a markup to maintain their profit margin. And when they mark up their products, assuming that uh, their products are perfectly substitutable in the global market, in the world market, rational consumers all around the world will tend not to buy our exports and therefore decrease our exports export um, incomes and so countries such as China assuming that we have a very elastic demand for our exports countries such as China the USA Japan they will all purchase say wool from New Zealand now because it is relatively cheaper and so in this case aggregate demand will fall because exports will fall so as we can see when inflation increases the aggregate demand or the real GDP in the economy will decrease because of five factors. Firstly, let's recap the five, fact five factors. Firstly, we have the wealth effect. Because our purchasing power has decreased, our consumption will also decrease, which affects aggregate demand. This consumption is a, is a function of aggregate demand. Secondly, we have a change in the distribution of wealth and income because we assume that uh, low-income households are the majority represent the majority of the consumers in the house in the economy. Therefore, when their wealth decreases because of a higher inflation rate, then therefore they are less likely to spend, and therefore consumption expenditure by that by that token will decrease as well. Thirdly, we have saving for a rainy day. And what this is, is that because people are, le are more concerned or are less confident about their future, they will save for the rainy day and so decrease their current expenditure now. Fourthly, we have productive versus speculative investments. And therefore, when businesses move away from speculative productive investments and invest in more speculative shares or derivatives or um, commercial bonds to return a higher yield in the short term therefore investment expenditure would decrease and that would consequently affect positively affect uh, aggregate demand and lastly with inflation our exports become less competitive and so our exports would decrease and so aggregate demand would decrease so now you can see that the aggregate demand curve exhibits a downward sloping function which which be, which is because when inflation increases our propensity to consume or our real GDP would decrease and similarly if inflation were to decrease from pi 2 to pi 1 we would exhibit an increase in real GDP or income